I just realized my phone's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's cold. It was just laying in my room charging. <laughs> and now that it's up against my head, I was like, ooh, that's chilly. <laughs> ah, the wonderful world of Pokemon. Are you a boy or are you a girl? I'm glad you now can tell genders. I'm always really disturbed that he has to ask that. <laughs> Unless somehow my avatar in the Pokemon world is the equivalent of Gact, then I could get it. I'm just glad he actually asks now instead of just assuming you're a boy. <laughs> well, the original avatar was only male. Gender choice avatars didn't come till later. I was just about to make that point. I'm making a joke here. But let's actually start the show by saying, Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Pokemon. Because 20th anniversary. Ah, the wonderful world of Pokemon, as I said in the intro. <laughs> ah, 150 animals. No wait. 151. No wait. 251. <laughs> no wait. Stop. Stop. No more. I can't possibly catch them all in my lifetime. <laughs> and... It got to a point where I stopped caring. <laughs> uh, actually, I never really did that part of Pokemon. I just went, ooh, I like these ones. I'm going to keep you. <laughs> My first encounters well, were... You go. I was going to say, I never completed a Pokedex, let alone a Living Dex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that Living Dex is insane. <laughs> yeah, but then... Combine that with the Pokemon Bank, and you never have to re-catch a Pokemon ever again. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a handy service. Too bad you have to pay for it. <laughs> the Pokemon Bank, that is. <laughs> oh, but it makes it pretty easy to transfer your Pokemon between versions, especially with the virtual console release of Red, Blue, and Yellow, or Red, Yellow, and Green in Japan. Those are now compatible with the Pokebox service, so you can now transfer even the original 150 from their native environments to the newer games. So, that's pretty awesome. And I remember my first encounters with Pokemon. I heard about it with the first games. I don't actually own red or blue or yellow. My first Pokemon game I ever owned was Pokemon Silver. And it was also the first time I upgraded my Game Boy to a Game Boy Color because my poor brick of a Game Boy lost its fight with a very heavy classic cassette tape player that fell just right on its screen. <laughs> so that started me an upgrade path, and here I am going, should I get the new 3DS? <laughs> Where I'm going, I can't believe I have to get the new 3DS because there's expanded features for Azure Striker. <laughs> Uh, so what were your first experiences with the Pokemon franchise, other than the anime? <laughs> I actually had both red and blue. Hmm. I got red first, and then I picked up blue later used so that I could get additional Pokemon via trades because I had no friends to trade with, and yes, I am one of those people who, even when they upgrade, tend to keep their old stuff. My original Game Boy is here somewhere and it does still work. There are some uh, lines along the left hand side of the screen. Wow. But the thing is, <laughs> wow that it still works or wow that I still have it? Both. <laughs> well, I still have some of my original Game Boy games, so. Mm. Well, my original Game Boy Color is around here somewhere, I believe that, or oh, I finally sold it to one of my friends who really wanted a Game Boy Color for some strange reason. I still have my original DS, though. Oh, it can't hold a charge, poor thing. Actually, I should say my original DS Lite. All right, off our subject of Nintendo upgrades and back to Pokemon. Oh, wait, isn't that the same thing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Another interesting thing that, just, that I just remembered about me getting my copy of Silver, me and my friends figured out a glitch in the game. This is way before the internet, by the way. So one of us figured out that there was this glitch in the way the system handled putting stuff into boxes and stuff like that. So we realized we could duplicate the Master Ball. <laughs> Basically what would happen is 
when you were moving items around, I can't really remember exactly if this was when the first games where their Pokemon could hold an item, because you could also duplicate a Pokemon doing this method too, so I think you could, your Pokemon could hold an item. So you made your Pokemon hold the Master Ball, then you were transferring them between boxes or something, because basically it was in the process where it says, do not turn off your system, we're saving. When it says that, you actually turn off your system. And then you would turn it back on, and the system would have written a duplicate of the Pokemon into this other box with the item. And you would still have the original Pokemon with the original item. So we used this to duplicate our Master Balls and also um, any Pokemons we wanted to trade. <laughs> Alright, so who did you pick for your starters? Ah, uh, well, when I eventually got a chance to play Red and Blue, in Red, which is the one I actually got a chance to play, I picked Charmander, of course. <laughs> And in Soul Silver, and that's Soul Silver. Well, yeah, but that came later. And Eventually, <laughs> yeah, in original Silver, I picked uh, Cinderquill. So yeah, I'm kind of a fire type starter, and I usually go based on designs and less on stats or supposedly how hard it makes the game. Like if you apparently the starters are also a good way to make the game more difficult or less difficult because apparently the fire starter is usually the uh, most easy compared to the I think the grass is the hardest. Um, I believe you have that backwards, because I never raised a Charmander as my original starter, because every time I went to grab a fire type, the game would warn me how much more difficult it would make things. Weird. I don't remember that warning at all. <laughs> well, remember, the first gem you go up against in the original storyline is a rock gem. Grass or water versus a rock gem, super easy. Fire versus a rock gem in first gen, not easy. Hmm. Now ridiculously easy because who cares what type you are because you can learn all these different move types and the entire structure no longer makes any sense because they keep trying to rebalance it. Before it used to just be rock, paper, scissors. Aw, but come on, we both like dark types. <laughs> Hello, Umbreon. Yes. Don't you don't you a lovely little creature you Ooh, it glows in the dark. Yes, yes, I I very much like my Umbreon and my Espeon. Oh, when I heard about those two, the first thing I was like, Give me a goddamn Eevee! I want those two! <laughs> Why is there only one Eevee in this game? I must breed Eevees! Come on, ditto! We got some work to do! <laughs> ah, breeding. Even the people at the daycare center don't know what's going on, because suddenly your Pokemon seem to really like each other! And we woke up in the morning, and there was this egg! <laughs> Would you like it? Sure! <laughs> Please continue with your experiences. I seem to have taken over the conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think I got all that far in the originals because I moved on to yellow, which was more fun for me because you had more interaction with your Pokemon instead of mm -hmm. them just being in a Pokeball all the time. It also reminds me of Heart Gold and Soul Silver with the fact that you could any Pokemon you had could follow you around. Yes, which I very much enjoyed in Soul Silver. Also, every game and every remake of a previous game, improved item system. Oh my gods. I don't think I could even play the old originals anymore. Because mm -hmm. I think there was like a 99 item limit or something, where you, you would actually run out of room and you had to find a PC just to offload stuff. <laughs> yes, or just drop it and get rid of it. Also, it was not organized. It automatically went into whatever order you got them in, and if you wanted them organized, you had to spend time organizing them. Where in later games, everything's separated by category. But if I never have to make another batch of poffins... <laughs> you also had the sort options where you could go, I want items sorted by this. Mm-hmm. Well, Fire Red and Leaf Green was really the first time for me where I got more of the full trading experience. Because mm. by that point, Lux and I knew each other. You know, and then I thought I was finally going to go fire type, but Lux started the game first. <laughs> so once again, all right, come on, Bulbasaur, let's do this. <laughs> you had a very nice Bulbasaur. Yes, and you became a very good Venusaur. <laughs> and that was probably almost the most time I spent on any of the games because you and I were keeping pace with each other. There was all that bonus content if you could get to a Nintendo Zone or a, you know, a GameStop or any sort of special location with all those extra islands and stuff. I think that was the first time I beat the Elite Four. 
I also like the fact we both found like, oh, oh, this grass area right here, great for grinding. <laughs> Though I must say, I, I did way more grinding than you at certain points. Because <laughs> I almost always came in way over leveled for any gym match. I would just walk in, one Pokemon, one move, done, bye! <laughs> and this was back when the gym leaders were actually hard. <laughs> ah, so where was your falling off point? Um, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and the re-release of Soul Silver. Ah, uh, yeah. The last game for me was Black and White. Though I black will and White be Black and White 1. Yeah, Black and White 1. I would have said Black and White 2 if I was meaning that. <laughs> mhm. Mm and I got a copy of Black. Ah, uh, maybe cuz I liked the legendary on that game. <laughs> that was the last game I really picked up. Um the next game I am going to go back into it with the release of No oh, wait, the last game I actually had was um Y, now that I think about it. Because it was a 3DS game. Mm -hmm. And though I will be getting the next 3DS game, which is Pokemon Sun... Sol Sun yeah. I must have said Sold and Silver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which will be Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. God, I hope they change up some stuff. I guess this is probably a good transition point of what would get you back into the game? <laughs> yes. So what would get me back into the game would be get rid of or modify the four move limit get rid of HMs, and quit making another 100 Pokemon every time you redo a system. Most of these newer ones, it's like, am I looking at Pokemon? Am I looking at Digimon? Am I looking at something from Yokai Watch? <laughs> I mean, the original 150 and the subsequent generation, they were pretty interesting to me. The later Pokemon... You know, Pineco, Marsh Talk, 97% of what I see when I play Pokemon Shuffle. Once I got past the first couple levels, I'm like, I don't even know these Pokemon. I'm in the Safari Zone right now trying to catch a Noibat, which I've never seen. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. This is whatever generation this Pokemon came from. It's the Zubat equivalent. <laughs> The oh. problem is so many of them seem like redos mm -hmm. of previous generation Pokemon. I think the reason the original 250, we like them and the designs feel better is because the original 250 were actually all designed around the same time. The only reason we only got 151 in the original cartridge is because that's all the cartridge could support. <laughs> Until they figured out some compression technology thanks to Iwata, they were actually able to um, include the rest of the Pokemon they originally made for the first game. Missing No actually is a Pokemon. You could actually trade Missing No from Red and Blue over to Silver and Gold, and actually he would turn into a Ho-Ho, because that's the actual data that was in there. He was just removed later, not completely, because they realized, oh, we need more room. <laughs> yeah, and the original games themselves were so glitchy that... Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's the main reason I'm going to get this new game is because I'm like, I hope they changed more. Because X and Y was a good start on changing some stuff. Uh, you know, specifically the look of what, that's what really got me for X and Y is, wow, finally, the game's actually entirely in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> and quite literally at some points, because you can actually turn up the 3D slider on the 3DS. <laughs> But that also reminds me of another reason I really liked and looked forward to Black and White is because they changed up the story a little bit. Yes, they're still an evil organization, but they have an actual reason you could actually kind of semi-agree with of why they want to take over the world. <laughs> Which is, all Pokemon are enslaved, we must free them! Yes, but then you still have the entire thing of them using Pokemon to battle you. How are those Pokemon not slaves? Mm -hmm. I know, but was, at least it was different than, we're a Team Rocket. Because <laughs> pretty much a, a, all the bad guys after Team Rocket were like, we're a, re we're a reskin of Team Rocket. We're a reskin of Team Rocket. We're a reskin of Team Rocket. <laughs> pretty much. And that was another thing, is the stories themselves were repetitive. It's like, okay, it's exactly the same thing, just redone monsters and redone adversaries. But overall, the entire game was exactly the same thing. 
I do like how in the later games that I've played so far, they are starting to, like, even though it's still there and it's still a like, goal to do, they've de-emphasized how important becoming the Pokemon champion is, and it's focused more around on what's going on around the actual Pokemon League, what these bad guys are actually doing, and how that's becoming a little bit more important than, oh, battle every gym leader, get to the Elite Four, defeat them! A lot of the games even include, after you've beaten the game, the story continues, and you can continue to do stuff after you've beaten the Elite Four to advance the story and find more about what's going on and why Pokemon are so important and stuff like that. Which is definitely an improvement because, you know, after a certain point, it's like, okay, I've beat the Elite Four, I get all the gym leaders to show up at this one location so I can rebattle them. All I'm really accomplishing is additional leveling. To what purpose? Because the story stopped. Hmm. And both me and you aren't really in the competitive scene, so we don't care much about all the special stats and special training and stuff like that to really tweak your Pokemon stats. <laughs> yes, even though somewhere I do have a breeding guide for Crystal. It was part of my overall Prima strategy guide because I was like, okay, I'm starting to get out of my depth. You know, how am I going to do these things that the game says it's important that I do? And then I didn't end up playing Crystal that much and never got into most of those things. So I'm guessing we should probably shift over to talking about the anime a little bit now. <laughs> we can do that. It's like, ah, oh, Ash, the never aging boy. <laughs> Yes, and leaving aside all fan theories, because they have stated Pokemon is repetitive because it can be. And if you think about it, is that really any different than all the iterations of Scooby-Doo? <laughs> uh, though it might just be changing styles and stuff like that, the recent seasons of the anime, other than the narrator confirming that he's still 10 or something, uh, have started to make him look a little bit older, which is good. Though I haven't watched the seasons placed around Black and White and Black and White 2 and X and Y, my DVR started not recording it properly, and Cartoon Network kind of not showing them, and I tried watching them through the app, but Nintendo only puts up like, oh, we have episodes 6 through 7 this week, and then next week we'll have 8 through some odd number, and eventually we'll loop back to 1, but it's going to take a while. <laughs> so you can't actually just binge watch seasons of Pokemon unless you have a Netflix account, which I don't have right now. Because I really have time to even watch YouTube videos. Damn you, Ben of Cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's less time and more bandwidth, Cap. Mm -hmm. So, going back to the very beginning of the series, what were your impressions when you first started watching the Pokemon anime? Well, I originally enjoyed it. I did not get it at episode one. The very first episode I ever saw was, it was shortly after Charmander had evolved into that unmanageable Charmeleon. It was actually the episode focusing on that Paris that uh, Meowth was trying to help level up to help that pretty girl that he wanted to take him in. Ah, the, the first episode I caught was actually the first episode because of reruns. I heard about it and I started watching it after that point. I also remember learning about Digimon at the time, in which I didn't really actually start watching because before I knew how good Digimon was, I was like, oh, it's just a Pokemon ripoff. Yeah, that was before I had an understanding that these things are actually genres in Japan. Mm -hmm. And that these two separate shows were actually created at separate times uninfluenced by each other, at least not as directly as I thought they were. <laughs> mm-hmm. Its uh, migration over to the United States at the time that it came probably had a lot to do with Pokemon. Mm -hmm. But that's more of a marketing factor. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like how we got all those mecha animes at once and I got burned down on mechs for a while. <laughs> I still love Gundam Wing, though. I need to rewatch that series sometime. Yeah, you gotta be careful when you say that because apparently it is one of the least regarded of the Gundam franchise. Oh, I know. The original is apparently the best, and then there was another one after that that they really liked. And apparently another popular one is one that I thought was okay, but everyone seemed to really love, which is, I believe, called Gundam G, where it was basically fighting tournaments of Gundams fighting each other. Yes, I'm thinking that had to be better unedited compared to what we would see on TV here in the U.S. All I remember is burning finger! And I'm female enough to admit that Gundam Wing has the prettiest pretty boys. Mm-hmm. But now back to Pokemon. Yes. We'll talk about Gundam another time. <laughs> so yeah, I watched a lot of the anime and 
as the internet became more accessible, I would try to look up what unedited episodes were like because through other anime experience, I knew what came on TV didn't match what actually happened. But like the video games, it got to the point where it felt constantly repetitive and uninspired. I managed to consistently watch Pokemon up through, let's see, the transition into, I think it was when they finally started to go into silver and gold. Because they had the Orange League between um, the original red and blue arc, and then they went Orange Island, and then they went into um, silver and gold. And I managed to watch all the way through that season arc, and then I started falling off, because back then I had to use VHS tapes. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got lazy about doing the recordings for it, and I also started like, oh, this is just the same stuff over and over again, isn't it? Why can't we get Brock back? Where the heck is Misty? Ah, <laughs> oh, Misty. All she ever wanted was her bike back. <laughs> oh, but I would occasionally watch other things, like when they had the handful of episodes that focused on characters that weren't the main characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really liked the um, specials where they did one on the Rangers and they did... I never got to watch all of it, but they did that one where it was a special where they were doing the ones based on the Mystery Dungeon series. Mm -hmm. I missed like the first four minutes of that and I was so annoyed because I'm like, that's where all the interesting stuff probably happened. <laughs> Speaking of uh, the Mystery Dungeon series, that reminded me of a two-part or three-part episode that I missed most of, which would have been nice. The one where Ash got turned into a Pikachu. I only remember that happening at the end of the episode and never being mentioned again. I'm pretty sure it was like at least was across two episodes at least because I remember Ash getting turned into a Pikachu and then I remember so I missed an episode and then I came back to him and was like, what happened to the whole Pikachu Ash thing? <laughs> yeah, I remember it being at the end of an episode and then there was never anything about it ever again. Also, the number of movies, I swear, it rivals the Land Before Time franchise. <laughs> oh, well, Pokemon is one of the longest running cartoons ever. Thank you, Japan, for never, ever stopping making episodes. <laughs> Seasons? What's that? Yes, the word hiatus is apparently a foreign concept. <laughs> Though I do remember seeing the first Pokemon movie in the theaters. And I was lucky enough that my theater got a bunch of the Pokemon cards. And since uh, apparently not a lot of people were going to my theater at the time to watch the Pokemon movie, they weren't giving out all of them, so they just would grab a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yes, lucky you. Back when you still had a theater. And I basically, after that point, I watched all of them on VHS slash DVD. Because I think the second movie came out around the time where there was a whole transition where they were still releasing VHSs and they also had DVDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw the first few and then it was occasionally. You know, I was like, okay, I saw the one with Deoxys and Rayquaza. I saw most of the one with Jirachi. I think the last one I actually watched all the way through was Lucario and the Secret of Mew. And that was the first one that interested me in a long time because finally Ash wasn't saving the world. And we were exploring, you know, the deep bonds between people and Pokemon. Though that reminds me of a great edit to one of the scenes in that movie. <laughs> uh, the scene where Lucario walks into a shrine or something and Ash surprises him. And in the edit, you hear this, ah, crunch, go! And Lucario goes, and that is why you never sneak up on me and walks away. <laughs> yes, that was in... Oh, was that AMB Health 4 or AMB Health 5? <laughs> they start to blend together after a while. Mm hmm. I was like, that, that's a great edit because you just don't. That's awesome. It is because Pokemon is extremely dark. We just never get to explore that darkness. And let's read the Pokédex entries. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. It's just hidden under the surface, but they don't really touch on it in the anime beyond the fact of. You know, mentioning having a Tauros burger. Like, dude, Ash, you have a whole herd of Tauros? <laughs> Is this why we never see them in battle? <laughs> uh, so do you want to start wrapping things up? Looking at the amount of time we've recorded, even edited down, this is going to be a lot for people to listen to of us basically nattering on about our memories of Pokemon. <laughs> 
Oh, it's a great franchise and people are still enjoying it today. That's a good question to end on. Are you looking forward to anything in the Pokemon world? You know, in the games, the TV series, new things that are happening with it? Uh, the trailer for the tournament game looks neat, but it's going to take a lot more than that for the franchise to really win me back. I think I'm too jaded now. <laughs> uh, you're talking about Poke Tournament or po Poke Tekken, or however you pronounce it. <laughs> yes. Yes, I watched part of the tournament where people were showing that game off for the first time, and I'm like, wow, that almost makes me want to buy the game. Actually, that kind of makes me want to buy the game, but I'm going to resist. <laughs> uh, I'm also looking forward to Pokemon Go, since I have a smartphone that actually works now. <laughs> so I can actually go around using my smartphone to catch Pokemon in the virtual world. Which actually sounds interesting, but for those of us in the Dark Ages that don't have smartphones... Thank you, high-cost data plans. <laughs> That's not really an option. And Verizon, you're going to take my unlimited data plan out of my cold, dead fingers. <laughs> I know, the hoops we have jumped through to keep you grandfathered on that thing. <laughs> uh, oh, I hope you've enjoyed our wild ramblings on Pokemon. <laughs> and this has been our meandering reminiscing on Pokemon. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux, you can find more of his stuff on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Or if you want to support me, you can go to my Patreon or check the link for commission availability.